All right. Hello and good evening to everyone joining us. My name is Allie Pearsall and I'm a recruitment and outreach officer here at Wake Technical Community College. I will be facilitating our discussion tonight alongside my colleague Kayla Buffalo. Kayla will be assisting with our Q&A session at the end, so please feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat box for our panelists. The chat feature can be found on the toolbar in uh, the Teams meeting. It's the circle with the two lines in it, um, so feel free to type in any questions as they come up. We ask that everyone joining us please keep their microphones off while others are presenting. Again, thank you all for being here, and I will turn it over for a brief description of the, what the transfer process looks like as a Wake Tech student. Mike, are you ready? Yep, thanks, Allie. Appreciate it. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well, and, and thank you for uh, attending this live university transfer session. We're excited to have you, and we're excited to uh, take a few moments tonight to um, share a little bit about um, some of our transfer programs that we offer here at Wake Tech. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Michael Beck. I serve currently as the senior dean of uh, the liberal arts division here at the college, but also work closely with university transfer. So thank you for attending. And I'd like to start off by saying that Wake Tech's university transfer programs are robust and they allow students to earn an associate's degree or a two year degree while completing coursework uh, towards a bachelor's degree, uh, or four year degree at a four year institution. And um, one of the one of the great things about um, the North Carolina Community College system in Wake Tech is that we have statewide articulation agreements in place to ensure that students can make a smooth transition from Wake Tech to the college or university of their choice. Um, there are a few degrees that I'd like to, to look at first. Um, uh, when uh, we offer quite a few degrees, and we'll go through them here one by one, but the, uh, the first transfer degrees that we'll review are the Associate in Arts and the Associate in Science. Uh, these are two of our most popular transfer degrees. Uh, the Associate in Arts is a two-year degree that is des designed for students who want to pursue a bachelor's degree in one of the liberal arts disciplines, such as um, criminal justice, um, English history, political science, psychology, sociology. Those are some of the um, most popular tracks that students uh, select as they move toward university uh, or four-year institution. Um, or if they just need training at a professional school that requires a strong liberal arts background. Um, the associate in science degree uh, is for students who want to pursue a bachelor's degree um, in areas such as uh, STEM related fields. This can include animal science, biology, chemistry, computer science, a lot of your programs that require a strong math and science background. So um, those are two um, kind of the core transfer programs that have been around with the North Carolina Community College system for quite some time. Um, two of our newer programs um, uh, that are now available for students um, throughout the uh, North Carolina Community College system and, and here at Wake Tech are the Associate in Arts and Teacher Prep and the Associate in Science and Teacher Prep. Um, the Associate in Arts and Teacher Prep or the AATP degree is designed for students who want to pursue a bachelor's degree and teach in a humanities or a social sciences field such as teaching history or maybe English, um, while the associate in science in teacher prep focuses more on preparing individuals um, for, uh, to earn a bachelor's degree and teach STEM related subjects again such as science, technology, engineering and math. Um, but one of, again, one of the great things about Wake Tech and the North Carolina Community College system is that our degree programs that I just mentioned are part of what is known as the Comprehensive Articulation Agreement, uh, better known as the CAA, just because uh, it keeps things short. But this governs the transfer of students between institutions in the North Carolina Community College system and the University of North Carolina system. And this CAA or this agreement allows graduates of two year associate's degree programs who are admitted uh, to constituent UNC institutions to transfer up to 60 credit hours, which would confer junior status. Um, so the CAA is really a great 
plan that we have in place or a great document um, or agreement that we have in place that allows us to partner with our state institutions um, all the way out west from Western Carolina, all the way out east to the University of North Carolina at Wilmington and in between. Um, we also have what's known as the Independent Comprehensive Articulation Agreement, the ICAA, which allows our students, um, our transfer students to also transfer to um, some of our partnering um, private institutions as well. And we'll get more into detail um, into that a little bit later as well. But we've got some data that the uh, North Carolina Community College system has provided. Um, in a recent report, the review of comprehensive articulation agreements that exist between constituent institutions in the North Carolina Community College system and constituent institutions of the University of North Carolina. In this report, it shows, um, uh, it provides us with data. Uh, the data results for transfer student performance continue to indicate that a, there's a strong correlation between degree and credit hour completion prior to transfer and academic performance at the senior institution. So for example, um, students who transfer to a, uh, from a North Carolina community college to a UNC institution with fewer than 30 credits uh, significantly lag behind their native counterparts in first year performance. And we say native counterparts, that's students who go directly into a four year institution. Um, Another note, community college uh, transfers who transfer with more than 30 credit hours, but without the associate's degree completion are closer in performance with their sophomore UNC native counterparts, but still trail in GPA attainment. Um, but most importantly, uh, students who complete the associate's degree prior to transfer and matriculate as juniors match the performance of UNC native juniors. So what we see here at Wake Tech um, is that these results confirm the foundational principle of this CAA that transfer students who complete the associate degree prior to transfer will perform as well as students who begin their college careers at UNC institutions. Um, another great thing about the uh, comprehensive articulation agreement is that uh, students who complete their degree at Wake Tech are guaranteed admission to one of the 16 UNC system institutions um, as long as students meet um, uh, certain requirements. For example, to be eligible for transfer of credits under this agreement, students must graduate from Wake Tech and have an overall grade point average of at least 2.0 on a 4.0 scale and a grade of C or better in all CAA classes or courses to transfer with an AA or an AS. Um, for the AATP and the ASTP teaching degrees, um, the GPA has to be at least a 2.7 overall. Um, so when you transfer uh, from Wake Tech with a completed degree of that full package degree, the chances and the likelihood of you transferring and being successful at your four-year institution of choice increase significantly. And, um, and another bonus is, again, it's a package degree. These uh, these degrees um, provide you with an opportunity to transfer up to 60 credit hours um, uh, to our partnering institutions. Um, while students who do not complete the degree are eligible to transfer credits, but it's on a course by course basis. So institutions if can pick and choose which classes transfer and which classes do not if the degree is not completed. So there are a lot of benefits for completing degrees up front. Um, and I know uh, we're kind of sh we're short on or limited on time tonight, so I'll try to move into a few other degrees. Uh, we also offer an associate engineering degree, uh, and this degree is designed for students who want to pursue a bachelor's degree in engineering disciplines such as aerospace engineering, chemical engineering, civil engineering, computer engineering, or mechanical engineering, just to name a few. Um, the associate of, in engineering to bachelor of science in engineering articulation agreement is offered under a what's known as a uniform articulation agreement between the uh, the state board of North Carolina Community Colleges and the University of North Carolina Board of Governors, and this applies to Wake Tech, and um, and you can also you can transfer to the uh, following UNC um, constituent institutions: ECU, North Carolina A and T, North Carolina State University, UNC Charlotte, and Western Carolina. Uh, the next degree is the Associate in Fine Arts, and this is a, a degree that is designed for students who want to pursue a bachelor's degree in visual arts. Um, the Associate in Fine Arts Visual Arts transfers yeah. to participating 
UNC system institutions through statewide uniform articulation agreements as well. And some of the um, schools uh, that are a part of this agreement uh, um, consist of Appalachian State University, East Carolina, um, just to name a couple, and some private institutions that we work with, the University of Mount Olive, St. Augustine's University, Meredith College, just to name a few. And there are also opportunities uh, to transfer uh, for our career and technical program students, or what we call students who are, are or what we call our AAS programs, the Associate and Applied Science programs. Uh, and many of our, uh, many of Wake Tech's AAS degree programs transfer in full or in part to four-year colleges and universities in North Carolina, offering graduates of career and technical programs the opportunity to build on technical training that they receive here at Wake Tech. So through um, a variety of innovative partnerships with local, statewide, and online institutions, Wake Tech can offer our AAS graduates many options for completing a four-year degree as well. For example, we have an RN to BSN program um, that applies to 11 constituent institutions across the state of North Carolina, such as App State, Fayetteville State University, East Carolina University, North Carolina A&T, just to name a few. Uh, we also have an Associate in Applied Science Early Childhood Education degree um, that is a transferable degree um, through an Early Childhood Education Uniform Agreement. And there are two options or two tracks with this degree. There's the bachelor's degree in birth to kindergarten teaching licensure program or a bachelor's degree in a related early education non-licensure program. And some of the programs that participate in this agreement are again App State, uh, North Carolina Central University, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, uh, just to name a few, um, and some of the programs that participate in the non-teaching licensure option um, include Western Carolina University, Winston-Salem State University, North Carolina Central University, and Elizabeth City State University, just to name a, a couple of additional institutions. And um, one of the, the final degree that I'd like to discuss um, that is a transferable degree um, through articulation agreements is the ECU BSIT completion program. And what this is, this for qualifying AAS degree graduates, um, they can pursue a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology. And this is a partnership that we have exclusively with East Carolina University. So I guess what we look at here is that regardless of um, where a student at Wake Tech is in their academic journey, they have numerous opportunities to transfer to partnering institutions across the state of North Carolina, whether they are uh, private um, institutions or public institutions. Students have um, an unlimited opportunity to transfer to schools of their, or school of their choice, um, whether it be a college or a four-year um, university or institution um, from like I mentioned earlier, from, from the mountains all the way to the coast. There are many opportunities. So when students complete their two-year degrees at Wake Tech Community College, historically they have performed well when they transfer, and they perform as well as native students at four-year institutions. And, you know, some of the benefits of attending Wake Tech are financial. Um, tuition costs are, are very reasonable compared to many institutions across the state. Um, it's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when you transfer over a complete degree instead of individual classes, um, uh, you get kind of the whole package sent over. You don't have to worry about going through a course by course review. And most of our students who transfer over go into their um, four year institution as a um, with um, with a junior status. So there are many benefits to um, being enrolled in transfer programs at Wake Tech Community College. Um, and again, there are many possibilities and options for our students. Uh, we have some of the best faculty and um, staff um, in the state of North Carolina. And I think Wake Tech is, um, in my opinion, the best community college across the state of North Carolina. And we really do our best to prepare students for transfer programs. Um, so um, I guess I will stop there and um, just say as we kind of segue into the next component of the uh, presentation as an enhancement to the CAA. Wake Tech has created special transfer partnerships with multiple UNC institutions across the state, and these partnerships pr uh, provide eligible students um, with a variety of benefits that may include career, financial aid, academic advising, 
from both uh, Wake Tech and university advisors. Uh, this also includes guaranteed admissions to partnering institutions, access to university campus uh, resources, athletic events, and more. So um, I'm really excited to hear more about what our what our guest speakers have to say about their, their co-admission programs, but I will stop there on my part with um, just a brief overview of what university transfer looks like at Wake Tech. Multiple degree programs, multiple options, and great opportunities for potential students and our current students. Thank you so Thank much you. for that general overview of the university transfer process. I'm now going to turn it over to some of our university partners so that they can address the special admissions programs that partner with Wake Tech. So first we're going to hear from Aggie Plus. Is Chanel here from Aggie Plus? We cannot hear you. We can hear you now. Can you say something? It says you are unmuted. Okay, it looks like we are having some technical difficulties with Chanel. So, Kathy, do you mind talking about Aspire Appalachian for us? Sure, I'd be happy to. Hi, everyone. How are you this evening? Wanted to share some information with you. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Kathy Frederick. I'm actually a Wake Tech employee, but I'm here tonight to share some information with you about Aspire Appalachian. If you're a student who's currently attending Wake Tech, if you're a student who's thinking about attending Wake Tech in the future, and your goal is to complete a degree at Appalachian State University, you should consider Aspire Appalachian. This is for students who are going to be pursuing an associate in arts, associate in science, or certain associate and applied science degrees at Wake Tech. You must be a student who is going to be a full-time student throughout your career at Wake Tech. You can begin as a part-time student. However, you'll need to remain full-time once you enter into the Aspire Appalachian program. The benefit of this program is once you complete your associate's degree at Wake Tech, you are guaranteed admission to Appalachian State University. There is a GPA requirement you'll notice that your GPA must be a cumulative or overall 2.25 GPA. You'll want to make sure that every course that you take at Wake Tech that you earn a grade of C or higher, so it will transfer to Appalachian. There is a course at Wake Tech that is called ACA 122. It's a college success course. Aspire Appalachian requires you to be enrolled in the course or complete the course with a 2.0 or higher at the time that you 
submit your application for Aspire Appalachian. So you'll want to make sure if you're a student who's currently enrolled at Wake Tech, if you've not yet signed up for ACA 122 and you're interested in Aspire Appalachian, make sure you make it a priority to add that to your spring schedule. Or if you're a student who's considering attending Wake Tech in the future, go ahead and sign up for that course in your first semester at Wake Tech. If you're a student who's just tonight learning about Aspire Appalachian and it's a program that you think you're interested in, you'll want to make sure that you have at least two semesters remaining at Wake Tech or you'll have at least 24 hours left to complete when the spring semester begins. A lot of great benefits for students. You'll get co-advising. There are special programs on the ASU campus that you'll be invited to attend. There are financial aid workshops they'll be offering and special scholarships to students. So once again, if you're a student who's currently at Wake Tech and you're interested in attending Appalachian State University, please consider applying for Aspire Appalachian. You can actually go to the ASU website and submit your application for Aspire Appalachian directly there. Um, I'll be entering in a contact person's email address at Appalachian State University if you have any specific questions that you'd like to ask. Again, thank you so much tonight for joining us, and I hope you'll consider Aspire Appalachian if you're a student who's interested in transferring from Wake Tech to Appalachian State University in the future. Thanks so much for your time tonight. All right, <clears throat> can everyone hear me? All right, great. Well, first off, thank you so much for allowing uh, UNC Chapel Hill to come and talk with you all about the Carolina Student Transfer Excellence Program. Um, you should really give yourself a pat on the back for taking that initial step to look at these different programs. So C-STEP is designed for students who are early in their community college career or uh, graduating high school students, and the program has been around since 2006. The benefit of the program is that it offers a guarantee of admissions to UNC Chapel Hill as a junior transfer. And so students will work to complete an associate in arts or an associate in science while at Wake Tech. And during that time, they will have a specific advisor on Wake Tech's campus to work with them to make sure that they're taking the courses that are most appropriate for them as they're making their transition. We also offer additional support for students who are pursuing STEM. They'll have a STEM specific advisor. And then we also ask that the advisor meet with uh, the students uh, once a month. And so the students come together to form a cohort on Wake Tech's campus and they meet monthly to learn about different social, um, career or academic resources to make sure they're breaking those progressions into uh, their degree. We also have uh, the students attend events on our campus three to four times a year, whether that's a cultural event, a football game, um, or uh, just visiting campus and getting a feel for what it's like. For the students as they're getting to make their transition into Chapel Hill, our academic advisors are visiting each campus um, at least once uh, a semester, as well as our financial aid office will visit once a semester. Students will transition into the university. We are a part of 14 community colleges, and so they'll transfer in as a larger C-STEP cohort, um, and they have a specific orientation, which we will cover. And then we work with the students as they arrive to Chapel Hill all the way through graduation, offering monthly programming as well as additional mentors uh, and resources to them along the way. Overall, our students are graduating at about 84% uh, at Carolina, and we've seen great success. Uh, all of our students are, um, again, required to do the Associate in Arts or Science because that allows you to come in with that block of 60 credit hours. We also have our students complete our student aid forms, which are the FAFSA and the CSS profile, because that qualifies students for our uh, marquee program, the Carolina Covenant, which can guarantee that your student would graduate debt free. Um, and so I'm happy to answer any questions for anyone about the program itself. There are two application deadlines, April 1 for high school seniors, as well as October 1 for anyone returning to uh, community college after being away for a little bit, or perhaps someone who didn't hear about the program while they were at their institution. 
Um, I will add my contact information in the chat, um, and I look forward to hearing some of your questions a little bit later on. Thank you. Good evening and thank you, Allie and Wake Tech crew for having us all here tonight. Uh, my name is Martha Harmony and I am the director of NC State's Community College Collaboration or C3 program. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, my, my computer was showing that it was still trying to unmute me, so I wanted to double check. Um, and I'll give you just a very brief overview of NC State C3 program. Um, like most of the programs that you are hearing tonight, um, this is a, a pathway program that offers a guaranteed admission from Wake Tech to NC State for students who are pursuing either the AA, AS, AE, or the AA or ASTP degrees at Wake Tech. Um, and upon completion of that degree with a 3.0 or better grade point average, you are guaranteed admission to NC State. Um, and again, you would come in at that junior standing and go directly into your NC State major. Um, one of the things with the NC State C3 program is that while you are enrolled at Wake Tech pursuing your associate's degree, you are actually also enrolled at NC State as what we call a non-degree study student. And as such, you have direct access to many of the same resources and technologies that a, a native um, on-campus NC State student would have. Um, we provide direct academic advising by NC State advisors who um, deliver uh, advising each semester while you're enrolled at Wake Tech through a combination of in-person advising and virtual advising, um, along with access to an NC State degree audit so that in real time you're able to track your progress toward your NC State degree. Um, and each semester that you complete your coursework at Wake Tech, we will go ahead and post that credit to your NC State degree audit. And so you visibly can see how your coursework at, at Wake Tech is also counting toward your bachelor's degree at NC State. Um, you also have full access to our MyPAC portal, which gives you access not only to the degree audit, but to all of our course planning and advising tools, um, and also um, a number of our other ad online advising resources. Um, as a C3 student, you will also have access to a number of other programming services that we provide, both through in-person, uh, opportunities to visit campus or perhaps events on your campus, as well as a series of virtual workshops that we offer each semester. Um, additional benefits of the C3 program beyond the advising component, the programming, um, all of which is really designed to help students make connections not only to our physical campus, but to our people, to our resources, and also to begin to build a community of other students, not just on the Wake Tech campus, but across our um, 13 community college campus partners. So that when you do make that transition from Wake Tech to NC State, you already feel like you're a part of the NC State community. You've already had experience using a number of our technologies, um, our online learning modules, uh, all of our MyPAC resources. And so we believe that that will help make that transition to NC State go more smoothly for you. Um, students who have either um, just started at the community college or within their first two semesters or high school seniors would be eligible to apply. Um, as was mentioned with another program, um, at the time you're admitted into the C3 program, you would need to have a minimum of 24 semester hours toward your associate's degree remaining at Wake Tech um, before you would transfer to NC State. There is only one point of application for the C3 program, and that is on the front end. So at the same time, you would be applying to Wake Tech if you're a high school senior or if you're already enrolled at Wake Tech, you would submit the C3 application. And if admitted, that would be your only application to NC State. You would not then also have to apply as a transfer student when you're ready to actually transfer. Instead, you would simply complete an online form called our intent to transfer form. Um, that is a very, very brief um, high level overview of the C3 program. I will also post my uh, contact information in the chat and we'll look forward to any questions that you may have at the end. And of course, would recommend that you check out our website for additional information and details. Good evening. How is everybody doing? Can you hear me, Allie? 
Awesome. Well, I'll go ahead and get started. You can jump to the next slide, but I'll go ahead and start by introducing myself. My name is Sydney Mazuka. I am the Transfer Student Success Coordinator for UNCW. I am actually housed out of Raleigh, so I am in my Wake Tech office typically about once a week, and so I am on campus very often. I would be your point of contact if you chose to go with the Pathways to Excellence. So just like all the other schools had mentioned, it is that guaranteed admission program for transfer students. For us specifically, we will only accept the Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, or Associate of Engineering for this program. So we look for students pursuing one of the three. Um, we are, will also be looking for a minimum 2.5 when you start, and then of course maintaining that when you're ready to apply to the university itself. So we can go ahead and move on to benefits. So benefits for the students, you're gonna get dedicated access to me. So once you do fill out the form, it will provide you with my information, but it'll also provide me with your information. So that's vital. I do have advising experience and training, so I will be able to provide you with pre-enrollment advice as well as admissions counseling and so on for that seamless transfer process. So you really get access to me your entire time. And then of course we do events designed specifically for these students in this cohort. So that is something pre-COVID we did on campus. I've done a couple of virtual events as well, specifically for my Wake Tech students. So that's something that you can build relationships with those other students. And then we give you priority consideration for our transfer merit-based scholarships. So that's a big deal as well. So you will get a tag on your account from the beginning. When you're ready to go ahead and transfer, you get that just basically a tag that will highlight us and we'll look at you before anyone else. And then we do waive your application fee. So when you're ready to apply, applying to Pathways to Excellence is free and then applying to the university itself is free. And then lastly, um, how to enter the program. So it is pretty simple. There is a letter of intent form. We basically call it that because it's not really an application as much as just getting your basic information um, about kind of what you're pursuing, your GPA, um, what you want to, what do you want to study, give you the general information. And then um, we do encourage you to fill that out within about your first year. First semester is ideal um, just to get my contact and vice versa as soon as possible. So the last slide will have my contact information, but I will definitely go ahead and put that in the chat as well. So I look forward to answering everyone's questions at the end. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us once again. My name is Kernisha Jones, and I am one of the transfer admissions counselors here at ECU. And so I had the opportunity to talk a little bit more about Pirate Promise. And like many of the other programs that you guys have heard, this is a co-admissions pathway for first year community college students. It guarantees you admissions to ECU and provides you with the opportunity to engage while still enrolled at your community college. Of course, for you all, that would be Wake Tech while providing you with the resources and assistance and on-campus opportunities as well as advising visits to the community college and we offer these virtual and then once you're ready to apply to ECU we will provide you with the fee waiver and application assistance. So at ECU, we do have a few eligibility requirements. You must be enrolled in the University Transfer Associate Degree Program, and you need to be full-time. So for most students, that's 12 plus hours, unless you are an early college or a career in college promise, dual enrolled student. And then we do require that you maintain a 2.5 GPA. Now, early college and career and college promise students are eligible, but you need to be in at least 11th grade to apply for the program. We have a host of programs available outside of those Associate of Arts and Associate of Science. That includes our Associate Degree in Nursing, the Associate of Engineering, our Associate of Fine Arts, and then our Associate of Science. And then there's a whole wide range of programs available within our BSIT pathway that we encourage you all to explore. Some of the perks of being a part of our Pirate Promise program is that you have access to that transfer advisor while you're at your community college. We will waive the application fee. We'll provide you with financial aid counseling. You have the eligibility to purchase an ECU One card that will gain you access to our libraries, our career services resources, our writing center, student organization and club sports memberships, campus events and activities, as well as discounted athletic tickets and you're eligible to purchase 
purchase a membership with our rec center. So all of our students are encouraged to visit piratepromise.ecu.edu. Our application for spring will open on January the 24th and close on February the 28th. Once you've gone through the application process, we verify you with your community college and then we notify students of their eligibility. And then once it is time for you to apply, typically four to six months before you plan to get started at ECU, we will provide you with information about applying and how to waive the application fee. Thank you guys for taking a time to listen to me this evening, and I will also put my contact in the chat. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm going to get my screen going. Hope you guys can see this. Um, thank you all for spending a little bit of time with us this evening. My name is Jamie Dawkins. I'm the Assistant Director for Transfer Admissions here at UNC Charlotte. Um, and I have the pleasure of talking to you about our 49er Next program. This is our Guaranteed Admissions program partnered with Wake Tech. We are actually a newer program. We just started with Wake Tech um, last spring, so we're really excited about this. And I'm excited to talk to you guys a little bit about the program. So 49er Next is essentially a program that we have with select community colleges across the state. Um, it is for students who plan to transfer to UNC Charlotte to pursue a bachelor's degree. It is designed for students planning to earn their full associate's degree at Wake Tech um, and that are planning to pursue one of our programs at Charlotte. Um, our program is a little unique in that it has a collaborative ad advising approach. So essentially throughout the students time at Wake Tech, they are partnered or advised by a Wake Tech advisor who works closely with our advising team here at UNC Charlotte to ensure the student is on a guided pathway for their intended major at Charlotte. So our advising collaborative advising approach allows our students to ensure that while they're at Wake Tech, they're taking the exact courses that they need to prepare for their intended major at Charlotte. Um, and it's ideally putting that student on track to enter into UNC Charlotte, not just with junior standing, but junior in their major is the ideal situation. Um, our program also includes more than just advising um, and the transfer admissions process. We also include in our program, similar to some others that mentioned, um, access to what we call um, your Niner Net account, which is your UNC Charlotte student account that you'll use throughout your time with us. And within that Niner Net account, students have access to things like our um, our Career Center has created modules and tools specifically for our Wake Tech. Um, 40 on our next students. We will host various financial aid workshops to help students prepare for the financial aid process and how it may differ at Wake Tech than what it might look like when they transfer to Charlotte. Um, and then we also provide these students with support in the transfer admissions process when it is time for them to apply. The great thing about 49 or next is any student that participates in the program earns one of the aligning or transferable associates degrees and earn, completes that with a 2.0 is guaranteed admission to UNC Charlotte as a transfer applicant. So we're really proud of this. Um, a couple of things that I always like to highlight, I mentioned that collaborative advising approach. So throughout a student's time at Wake Tech, we are keeping tabs on the courses they're taking and their performance in those classes and making sure they're staying on track and hitting critical courses at the critical time, making sure their GPA is staying on track for their intended major. Um, and we share information back and forth. So we receive students transcripts each and every semester so that we can ensure they're taking the correct classes and working with their advisor at Wake Tech to ensure the student is advised and taking the um, correct classes within their associate's degree, preparing for that transition to Charlotte. We already have these pre-established transfer pathways set up so students when they enter into the program, they let us know what major they want to study at Charlotte. We place them in the pathway that is already pre-established for their intended major so that they can pursue and move forward seamlessly. Throughout their time, we'll offer career workshops. I mentioned those before. They'll be in the mode of modules on their NinerNet account, which gives the student access to their UNC Charlotte student account and allows them to start seeing how the technologies that we use here at Charlotte even before they get to us. I mentioned financial aid workshops and presentations happen each and every semester to kind of align with the stage of the 49 next program that the student is in. Um, one of the other cool things about our program is that all of our students receive a UNC Charlotte 49er ID. Uh, so this UNC Charlotte 49er ID we send to students. It gives the student access to our campus if they would like to come to campus, maybe go to an athletic event. They can access athletic tickets just like our current students as part of the 49er Next program. And we host various events where we may be on Wake Tech's campus or we may invite the students to come check out Charlotte. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and of course, throughout the time in the program, and our enrollment team, our admissions team is supporting these students. So we are answering questions. We're helping them know when's the right time to apply, how to apply, what they need to submit. And we work with them through that process. 
Um, a couple things about eligibility and joining the program. So our next cohort will be for the fall 22 term. Um, students that are interested in joining our program, if you're already at Wake Tech, those students are encouraged to complete an interest form that shows up on the Wake Tech website and it'll show up in March. Um, for those of you that are maybe in high school, seniors in high school is planning to start at Wake Tech for the fall 22 term. When you complete your Wake Tech application, you can indicate an interest in the 49er Next program. You can also do the interest form once it goes live on the Wake Tech website as well. Um, ideally, this program is for students in their first or second semesters at um, Wake Tech. So we want to catch you early on so you really can take advantage of that proactive advising and get on track with your intended major from the get go. Um, but we do want students to have at least a year left at Wake Tech in order to participate in the program. You must be planning to transfer to Charlotte. You must be planning to earn either the Associate of Arts, Associates in Science, or the Associate of Engineering during your time at Wake Tech. Um, and you really want to make sure you're aligning and you're you have an idea of what major you want to study at Charlotte. If you're still undeclared, that is OK. You can still participate in 49er Next. Just know that um, the only majors that are not eligible as part of the program are engineering, technology, fine arts, architecture and nursing. But all of our other majors are available and opportunity for you to pursue um, through the 49er Next program and starting your journey with Wake Tech. So. Here is our information, um, 49er Next at wakeTech.edu. I mentioned before, or sorry, WTCC at edu. Uh, so, uh, we have an advisor, his name is Anthony. He works for Wake Tech. He is phenomenal. He is our liaison. Um, but myself, my counterpart, Jessica, and Anthony all work collaboratively to support our Wake Tech 49er Next students. Um, in the chat, I'll put my contact information. I'll put the 49er Next website there for you as well. And I'll also drop this email in there in case you have any follow-up questions or if our team can support you. Um, we would love for you to join 49er Next. It, like I mentioned before, it is a new program and it offers our students some great access to really connecting to Charlotte and beginning that journey and planning for the most seamless transfer. And we hope to see you at Niner Nation soon. Thank you so much for having me tonight. All righty. And I think, um, is Chanel here? Did you get your microphone working? If not, we will go ahead and move on to our question Q&A section. All righty. Kayla, do you want to take over? All right. Um, thanks again. Uh, if we were in person, I'll have everybody give our um, guests a round of applause, but virtually we will give you all a round of applause and thank you for joining us and informing us about your programs. Um, again, if you have any lingering questions, go ahead and post those in the chat um, and we will get those answered now. I'll start off with a few questions for is Mike still here? Um, but one of the questions is based on statistics are students who want to transfer after their first year at Wake Tech at a disadvantage. Students who are I am here. Thank you. Um, so students are they at a disadvantage who transfer after their first year? So again, based on on a the most recent report that um, that I referenced earlier in the um, in the presentation from 2020, it, it shows that I hate to use the word disadvantage because um, we like to think I like to think that students are successful for um, w when they complete a single class as they progress throughout their their academic journey. So uh, but I guess um, uh, another way that I'd word it is that statistically speaking and, and based on um, the most recent data, students who complete uh, their two year degree are, are are more likely to do better at the institution uh, that they transfer to. So um, again, is that to say that all students who complete their two-year degree, transfer to a four-year institution and graduate are successful? Not necessarily. The chances are, are higher for that. Um, and it's also, you, you can't say that students who uh, transfer after one year will not be successful because we know, uh, you know, I've worked with many students who have transferred after a year or a semester or two and have transferred and have been exceptionally um, successful. At an institution, so it's really a, a you know a case by case uh, I think determination. You have to look at uh, you know the life of the student, where they are, how motivated they are. But just overall and in broad and a broad looking at a broad perspective, the majority of students who acquire and obtain their two year degree uh, on average do better than their counterparts who um, do not complete the two year degree before transferring. So again, um, I hope that sums it up. 
Thank you. Um, I know we had some of our guests chime in in the chat on this question, um, but if you didn't and you would like to chime in, is there a limit on how many credits um, that your institution will take as far as transferring for any school that didn't chime in in the chat? Uh, NC State does not really have a cap on the number of credit hours that they will post on an NC State transcript. Um, however, in order to earn an NC State degree, you must complete at least 25% of your total coursework at NC State. Um, so for students who transfer in significantly over that 60 hour mark, um, there may be courses that would not count toward your degree if you came up against that 25% uh, cap. But generally, if you're in that 60 to 64, 65 hours, you're not gonna have any issues meeting that 25% cap. And, and again, that's 25% minimum completed at NC State. Very similar to NC State, we do require that 50% of your undergraduate degree be completed at a university, and then 25% of it must be completed at ECU. So very similar, it's around that 60 to 64 hour credit hour that students are able to transfer in from the community college. Wonderful, thank you both. Next question, would you recommend matching your associates with a further degree or di diversifying if you plan on specializing? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. No worries. Would you recommend matching your associates with a further degree or diversifying if you plan on specializing? Um. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I, I think I know where we're going with this, but let me I'll kind of comment. And if I'm wrong, please let me know um, to the individual who made the comment. So. I've worked with community colleges now for for many years, and we've had a lot of students who will earn a two year degree and then they'll uh, want to come back and, and earn a second associate's degree and specialize in that particular field. Um, so basically, we have a lot of students who end up with, well, I say a lot. We've had some students who end up with two associate's degrees, usually around 60 hours each, right? Um, and I, I usually have this conversation about once or twice a semester with, with students over the phone. And, and my recommendation is if you know what you want to do long term and, and you know what those goals are, again, let me, let me stop by saying it's a case-by-case -case basis. But in, in my opinion, in my experience, if you earn a two-year degree, an associate's degree, I say let's find you a four year degree, a bachelor's degree that can be specialized to get you to where you want to go. So I'm not exactly sure if that's if that's where the question was going, but um, I recommend getting a two year degree and then specializing in a four year degree that can usually take you where you want to go. And sometimes it can take you beyond where you want to go. So, um, again, I've worked with students in the past who have earned multiple associate's degrees and there's nothing wrong with that. We have a lot of folks who earn a, um, a two year degree or a four year degree and say a particular field and come back and earn a second uh, associate's degree and say like IT or one of those um, degrees that the, the job, there's plenty of jobs in demand, right? So, and, and we have a lot of students who do that as well. So there's no necessarily right or wrong answer, but just based on my experience, I recommend getting the two year, transferring to a specialized four degree, four year degree and, and working from there. Perfect, thanks for that, Mike. Um, next question. Um, and everybody can chime in on this question. Are these transfer programs only for students transferring as juniors? I can talk about 40 under next for UNC Charlotte. Um, the 40 under next program is for students that are planning to earn the full associate's degree. So if you are wanting to participate in 49 or next, that would assume you are planning to do your full associate's degree prior to transferring to Charlotte. Um, and obviously coming in with your associate's degree, you are likely have between 60 and 64 credit hours granting you junior standing. In the event you are a student that wants to transfer prior to earning the associate's degree, 49 or next may not be the right fit for you, but our transfer admissions team can still support you in navigating a transfer prior to earning the associate's degree. But there's a lot of benefits to earning that full degree, earning 
participating in a program like 49 Next and the other ones that you've heard tonight by earning that full degree. But if you are a student that wants to transfer early, um, there are pathways for that. And um, while it's not part of our 49 Next program, our transfer admissions team can always help students plan for a transfer to Charlotte at whatever stage makes the most sense for them. Very similar um, at Chapel Hill. Um, the C-STEP program is designed for students who want to enter as a junior transfer. However, C-STEP is only one pathway to Carolina. And so if you're wanting to transfer after one year, you are completely able to do so. And we do have the supports there to help you navigate that process. I will concur with everything previously stated. So higher promise is also the same way, but again, we're definitely el eligible and able to help students that are looking to transfer at any point in the process. And the same thing at NC State, um, C3 does require completion of the associate's degree, but students with uh, 30 hours of completed college level work uh, can transfer through the traditional transfer admission process. Similar for UNCW, so our minimum is just 24 hours otherwise. So. Wonderful. I think that was everybody. Cool. Thanks, everyone. All right, next question. What if for a particular BDP for a major, it says to stay on track, they recommend transferring after your first year? Um, I had responded in the chat already, but I'll just speak to the group uh, in person, so to speak. Uh, for NC State, there are certain programs within the university's offerings where it is, quite frankly, in the student's best interest if they want to complete a four-year degree at NC State in a shorter time period to go ahead and transfer after one year. That would be particularly the case for majors within our College of Design because of the requirement that students complete studio courses each of their eight semesters. So if they do not begin their time at NC State, they're still going to have eight semesters of studio coursework to complete upon transfer. So in those circumstances, um, we provide guidance. And that's, again, one of the reasons why there is still an option for students to transfer through the traditional transfer pathway um, in those cases where it is in the student's best interest because of academic coursework that they're not able to get um, at the community college level. And again, that's typically in more specialized, really niche programs like our College of Design majors. Charlotte is similar. Um, in fact, our 49 next program is uh, for all majors, except for a handful that we've already identified are programs that are not, um, that in some cases it's better off for a student to get to us sooner rather than later. So you'll notice in the 49 next program, it doesn't include programs like nursing and architecture and visual arts um, for the sake of those programs have some specialized requirements, additional application processes uh, tied to them. Um, so we've already kind of removed those from our 49 next program, but um, that information that you see on BDPs is super helpful. I'm glad to hear you guys have identified those and are looking at those. Um, because those are great tools to help you um, along the way, in addition to these programs that are already established. All right, thank you both. Um, next question, with any of these transfer programs, is there a cap on acceptance each semester? So for C-STEP, we typically each cohort will come in with about 15 students. However, since we have expanded to our uh, 14 schools all the way from uh, Silva, North Carolina to the coast, um, typically we allow students at Wake Tech to grow a little bit larger. So we do have larger cohorts at Wake Tech where students will, will probably get about 30 students per cohort. For UNCW, our Pathways to Excellence has no cap. I would just highlight that it guarantees you admissions to UNCW. It doesn't guarantee you admission to your desired program. So our nursing 
program is capped at 60 each semester. So there's obviously things like that to pay attention to. Respiratory therapy has 20 seats. So pathways to excellence, there's no cap. As long as you're eligible, you're good to apply to the program, be in the program. But that's something I think some other programs similar, you might want to pay attention to the program that you are trying to transfer into. So oh, guys, I don't, sorry. Go ahead. Um, at NC State, uh, we generally will admit between 25 and 30 students per year from Wake Tech. Um, our other community college partners are typically around 15 per year, but Wake Tech, because it's larger, we will take, again, for C3, 25 to 30 students per year. So at ECU, we're very similar to UNCW in that we do not have a cap. We currently have about 200 students enrolled in the program with 80% of those students enrolling at ECU after completing their program. And then this year, we're super excited that we had our first Pirate Promise graduates to graduate from ECU. So just a cool shout out to all of those students. But similar to UNCW, it does not guarantee you admissions into specific programs such as nursing and engineering as they do require supplemental applications. And 49er Next is very similar. Um, so students who earn their associate's degree as part of the 49er Next program with a 2.0 GPA are guaranteed admission to Charlotte. We don't have a cap. Um, some of our majors are more competitive, engineering, business, computer science. Um, they have additional admissions criteria. Now with our collaborative advising approach, we are tracking and helping you stay on track for direct admission into your major, but your admission is guaranteed to the university. You do have to meet those supplemental additional um, requirements for those specific majors. Um, but any student that is part of the 49er Next program finishes their transferable associate's degree with a 2.0 GPA is guaranteed admission to Charlotte. Wonderful, thanks everyone. Next question, if you're undecided on what school you want to transfer but know your major, how do you choose um, which one of your schools would be right for them? How would you choose? That's a wonderful question and I think that's where um, the ACA class is so important for students because it does give you the tools to kind of navigate what campus is going to be best for you and hopefully through that process um, you can narrow it down to where instead of looking at all 16 schools you may have it down to three and you can look at the academic or uh, baccalaureate degree pathways for those three and kind of navigate the process that way and kind of look at courses that could count for all three institutions um, and then as you're making that um, decision look at taking those courses that are you're guaranteed to get credit for and guaranteed to meet lower level requirements that have the little you get C tag to it or the universal general education transfer credits. And I'll also say that every student at Wake Tech has an academic advisor, um, so I'd work closely with your academic advisor who um, are really specialist when it comes to um, helping students determine which programs are located at which institution. So I would, I would um, strike up a conversation with him as well. I think a very, another very important factor is that as a transfer student, it's, you might go through this process a bit later, but it's not a process unlike the same process that students go through if they're going off to a four-year institution as a first-year student. I would encourage you, uh, obviously you wanna make sure that the major that you're interested in is offered by the institution that you're considering, but then to take the time to visit the campuses because so much of that decision really revolves around feeling like you have a connection on that campus. Um, do you feel at home there? Do, does it offer not just the academic offerings that you're looking for, but what, what's the social experience like? What's the residence life like if you're going to be living on campus? What's it like if you're going to be a commuting student? So getting to, to know a sense of the, the sort of the social aspect of a campus beyond the classroom becomes very important in making that um, decision and um, that involves, again, taking some time to do a little bit more research, attending open houses, doing virtual visits, and then in-person visits. I really can't stress enough the importance of, of visiting those campuses. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, everyone. 
Um, this is for our schools that are a little bit further away from um, our Raleigh area. Um, so how do you schools, um, further away schools, plan to interact with the students while they are at Wake Tech? Um, what kind of social programs are you all planning currently? Um, I'll kick things off with Charlotte. Um, so part of 49er Next program, we actually plan a specific event for Wake Tech students each and every semester. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, it has put some challenges on us getting to campus, but we did just recently host a campus, a virtual campus tour for our 49er Next students at Wake Tech, and we continue to host different events like that each and every semester. Um, as COVID restrictions lift, we will be visiting Wake Tech and we will be there fairly frequently. Um, I actually have had the opportunity to host uh, about five Wake Tech visits virtually this fall since on-campus visits weren't allowed. Um, but again, as restrictions lift, um, we are not there every day, but we are there quite a bit. And um, for our 49er next students specifically hosting various events throughout the semester, um, whether it's a social type event, inviting you guys to a football game, um, hosting a workshop or connecting with financial aid. We're hosting various um, programs specific to Wake Tech 49er next students. And then outside of that program, visiting campus as much as we possibly can. Yes, for UNCW, very similar. I'm lucky to be in the Raleigh area. So I've been doing some virtual events specifically for Pathways to Excellence students, especially for students I find that are looking for maybe a roommate they already know. So if you've been in the program for a little while, so it's a great way to connect with other Wake Tech students you didn't, didn't know before. But then apart from that, so every time we do an open house or on campus event, we do specific Pathways to Excellence components. We've done baseball games pre-COVID. Um, so giving tickets and then I hope to start doing some events locally. I know we would like to maybe bring some partners out to the Raleigh area and do some events as well, specifically for Pathways to Excellence in UNCW as a whole. So that's kind of future planning. And like I said, I'm usually in near around or on the Wake Tech campus once a week. So that is a perk as well. And I was just going to share Aspire Appalachian has hosted virtual events for their Aspire Appalachian participants. They've also invited students up to Boone for a lot of fun activities on and off campus. I know they've done some hikes around the area and they've also just had students like for ice cream socials. So if you're a student that's interested in Appalachian, there would be the opportunity to attend an event virtually if you're not able to make the drive up to Boone. But if you're a person who loves the outdoors and you want to get up to Appalachian's campus, they certainly host outdoor events for Aspire Appalachian participants. So um, just depends on what's convenient for you and what you're interested in. All right, thank you all. Um, and I know tonight was pretty brief. Everybody gave a pretty brief overview um, of your programs. So what upcoming opportunities do you all have to learn more details about your programs? If you wanted to give a quick pub of those upcoming events. So at Chapel Hill, um, really, we are um, welcoming any student. They can always reach out to us, ask us any questions about CSTEP um, on Wake Tech's campus. We have uh, two academic advisors or two faculty members who are advisors there that would be happy to talk with students, Derek Nance uh, and Dominique Ali. Um, Derek is in philosophy. Dominic is in uh, chemistry. So um, anytime you have questions, always feel free to reach out to Carolina. Um, we're happy to help you out as much as we can. At ECU, we are continuing to offer our virtual sessions and our virtual appointments, and then we are encouraging students to come and visit us for a tour. We're going to wrap those up early December, but they will resume in January, as well as we're going to have some admitted student days for our admitted students that you can join, as well as a, a few additional opportunities for spring recruitment. For Charlotte, um, we will start um, building our fall 22 cohort of 49 Next with Wake Tech in early March. 
Um, so students can actually begin applying to the program in early March. If you're applying to Wake Tech now, you can indicate an interest in the program on your CFNC application. Um, and then, of course, in terms of connecting with Charlotte, come visit us. Uh, we would love for you to come see campus. I think the best way to find out the right fit is to be and see the campus. So come check us out. Um, our entire team is trained on transfer and can answer questions about a general transfer to Charlotte, the 49er Next program specifically. So come visit us. We'll have an open house event on March 26th. We'll do uh, transfer specific tours weekly throughout the spring semester. We'll even have some virtual options. Um, and you will likely hear more about uh, recruitment opportunities or events that we're hosting specific to the 49er Next program throughout the spring semester. So stay in touch with us. Our 49er Next email address is monitored all the time, um, and our team can work collaboratively, collaboratively to connect with you and answer any questions you have. A great way for UNCW, if you actually fill out that the intent form, we never close it currently, so it's always open. That would be a great way to connect with me because I can send out different dates that I'm doing personally, um, virtually, or of course in person. We do have our Seahawk talks still going on through the rest of this week that all students are welcome to, so those are specific by major. And of course, visiting campus, so campus tours are still available through early December. And then we actually plan on doing some open houses in the spring, and hopefully we'll be able to do some specific pathways to excellence events during those so look out for that so connecting with me would be a great way because i usually send out information to students about upcoming dates and at nc state if you have an interest in learning more about the c3 program you can reach out to us anytime uh, by email or by calling us um, you can also follow us follow us on social media if you want to keep up to date with events that we have going on. For general visits to the NC State campus, um, we do offer a full virtual tour of campus that includes uh, 360 views inside residence halls, classroom buildings, the gym, Reynolds Coliseum, you name it. So you, for those of you who are not able to physically come to campus, we do have a full option for a virtual campus tour, but we are running in-person campus tours uh, throughout the week, both for first-year students, and then we also have transfer-specific information sessions and tours as well. So um, if you go to the NC State website um, and the Visit Campus section, um, I'll put that uh, link in the chat, then you can sign up for an information session or general campus tour anytime that's convenient for you. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, that will conclude our discussion portion. Um, thank you for all your wonderful questions and thank you for our guests for being willing to answer all of those questions. I'm going to hand it back over to Allie to wrap us up. Yes, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, virtual round of applause for everyone. Um, you gave us some really great information um, and we're hopeful to partner with you again in the future. So thank you so much for your time. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks, Allie. Me too, bye.